Time now for Back Pages tonight here on Sky Sports News. We're bringing you a first look at the sports stories in the morning's newspapers. And joining us tonight are the Mirror's Chief Football Writer, John Cross, and Riath Al Samurai, who is the Chief Sports Writer, a feature writer for the Daily Mail. Good evening to you both. Look forward to hearing your thoughts in just uh, a minute or so's time. Let's just take you through the papers if we have them this Monday evening. The Express, Shock and Law. City and Prem both claim victory in legal cases that could prove game changer. Uh, also there, uh, Kane is fit to lead England at the top and Ten Hag's future is touch and go, or took and go, I guess, with Thomas Tuchel being lined up. And also, Michael Shaker, uh, the uh, Leicester Tigers boss, rugby bosses don't want me here. And also return to the hold for Dominic Solanke, who is back uh, in the England fold. Uh, for the upcoming Nations League games. The Telegraph looks like this. Uh, Premier League civil war erupts after City verdict. Uh, their top left, uh, Pope feels the heat. Pakistan dominates, but England under pressure uh, that the first test in Multan is underway. Uh, the Guardian, tribunal turmoil. City claims sponsorship win, but Premier League hits back. D. Dave Ten Hag is Van Nistelrooy waits in wings. Yes, Ruud Van Nistelrooy, former United player who's recently arrived at Old Trafford. And I'll dedicate myself to LA 2028 if 50 metre breaststroke is in. That's uh, from Adam Peaty, who won silver at Paris 2024. The Mirror go uh, with a similar headline there for uh, Eric Ten Hag. Touch and go. Uh, Ten Hag future to be decided today with Tuchel back on United's radar. Uh, and in, in the legal case on, on associated party transaction rules, uh, they've just gone for a scoreline. City won, Prem won. Uh, Kane's fit for Lions as well, with uh, Harry Kane uh, ready to play for England against Greece and Finland. And Newcastle three years after the Saudi takeover on the uh, inside pages. The I, City claim win on unlawful sponsor rules. And long holiday, question mark. A Ten Hag heads off on break as major United power brokers gather for meeting. Uh, and Kane clear for England, but Trio pull out with injuries. This is the uh, back page of the Sun. Carnage is the headline. City claim win over Prem rules. Now big rivals are dragged in. A keep calm and Harry on. Uh, and uh, Eric packs his bags for a holiday. So you can tell what is dominating uh, all of the back pages. It is, of course, uh, the case between the, the Premier League and Manchester City. It is, of course, England, uh, also Manchester City uh, and Manchester United as well. OK. Uh, let's start then with the story that really is dominating. Manchester City and the Premier League both claiming victory in a legal fight over commercial rules governing clubs. Um, John, Riath, welcome along once again. Um, John, just simply, uh, your, your take, your, your own thoughts on what we've heard today. And it seems like most of the papers are going for a fairly balanced uh, sort of reading of, of what's happened today. Yeah, David, I, th I think our headline is probably very fair on, on the back, really. City won, Prem won. I do think that City probably, with the an the announcement of this verdict, as this kind of news quickly spread over um, social media, certainly felt they went 1-0 up. But um, as The Guardian quite rightly sort of said, basically, Premier League certainly feel as if they've equalised. Listen, it's a, it, you know, it is a complex case. It surrounds, um, for those that sort of kind of been following it closely, will know that it's basically Manchester City challenging the associated party uh, transactions. And basically, it, it, they, they are, um, they, they took a, on a legal case, which was then heard by an independent tribunal. Um, their victory, I think, has really covered two aspects of the rules, controlling the value of sponsorship deals um, linked to club owners, which were deemed unlawful. Um, by a tribunal and the Premier League basically making it very clear that they think that uh, an overwhelming number of uh, APT rules were upheld and um, any any kind of wrong wording or perhaps misplaced wording in, in those remaining rules can quickly be rectified. There is indeed plans now for a... Um, uh, a hearing, uh, sort of a sorry, a meeting between um, Premier League clubs um, in the next week or so to kind of you know further discuss that. Um, also creeping in is basically you, you know the Telegraph and Sun making uh, sort of reporting on this that basically City City's case has then dragged in um, the likes of Arsenal and Chelsea over interest free loans from um, from owners. So look, it's incredibly complicated. It's incredibly co uh, complex. It's not to be um, confused with the outstanding sort of charges against City, which obviously um, is still is still in the distance. But City obviously feel as if they've proved their point, and the Premier League, uh, you know, very very 
um, happy with with the outcome that which which is going to be put right. Really, I think for for, for the the average fan, I mean, what, you know, what what does it mean? I personally, I do think it shows the the, the sort of kind of disconnect between Manchester City and some of the some of the other sort of rivals and sort of in, within the Premier League and, and most importantly uh, the clubs who make up, up obviously the shareholders so this one is going to is going to drag and drag i do think it's incredibly complicated and i personally think it's just too simplistic to say one side has won and and the other has lost i, I do feel it's you know it's far deeper than that and i think the case will run and run and and frankly, I don't know. I, 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 I'm a great football lover, and basically, I just want to see it played out out on the pitch. Frankly, mm. but you know, I do think both sides really feel as if as if that they've they've won, and they're sort of the victors today. So make of that what you will. But I do think it's almost a draw after extra time. Yeah, and, and listen, it's just a rest to a couple of points that you made. I mean, listen, obviously, it's incredibly complex. It wouldn't be such a long document if it was simple. Um, it's, you know, 170 odd pages, isn't it? And you're absolutely right to point out that this is this is different and distinct and not directly related to the, 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 legal, the legal action the other way, the, the, the 115 charges from the Premier League to Manchester City, which City remain uh, steadfast in their belief that they've done nothing wrong. Um, Riyath, what, what, what are your thoughts on, you know, it's, I mean, you know, the, the details, I suppose, are fascinating in terms of some of the other clubs that were supportive of one side or, or the other. But it seems to suggest, you know, we've, we, we feel like we've got a very sort of maybe potentially fractured top division that we're seeing here. Absolutely. And look, I don't want to digress too much straight off the bat, David, but, you know, prior to coming on air, we were seeing adverts for Fabio Wardley and Fraser Clark, and they fought out a draw and both men held up their hands at the end of the fight and celebrated a win. So, you know, it, it, there is that kind of slightly slight echo of boxing about all of this size claiming the victory. Look, there are a couple of headlines there on the back pages which which, which really kind of caught my eye. That would be carnage and civil war. And that actually goes to the question you're asking there, because we have we have seen that um, you know one of one of one of the sort of tangible details that has come out of this is concerning these shareholder loans and 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 their place within the APT rules. Now of course that 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 is that is that a can of worms? Are, are worms big enough to quantum to, to, to you know? To, are they suitable for this for this analogy? This this feels pretty massive. You've got I, I, we've seen the statistics today that there are 1.5 billion pounds tied up in borrowings between Premier League clubs and their owners and shareholders. Now among them, you've got Arsenal believed to be upwards of 250 million in loans from shareholders. Everton north of 400. Chelsea. Somewhere in the region of 150 million. So we're, talk we're, we're, we're talking about the questions that come from this scenario. What happens now in terms of in terms of these rules? How does it affect clubs who have taken taken these loans? What ha what what ha what happens next in that regard? When how will it be factored into PSR calculations? So. When the Sun call it carnage, I mean, I'm, I'm inclined to agree. And when when the Telegraph referred to civil war, that 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 you know that 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 also hits the note because we've got a situation where Arsenal, who are one of the teams, one of the one, one of the clubs listed as giving evidence on behalf of the the, the in in favour of the sort of Premier League side of this the, the, this debate, they 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 they're going to they're going to be looking at the situation now and saying, wait wait a second, how does this how does this affect us? What does this look like going forward? Now, the, 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 the suggestion I've seen reported today is that it's it's not going to be applied retrospectively. That internally means there's going to be a process. There's going to be an emergency next week to an emergency meeting next week with the Premier League clubs to start thrashing out what the what the new rules will look like. But I think I think when we look at this. This, this first and foremost, it's a very mess messy situation, incredibly complex. Like John says there in his answer a moment ago, I, I, th I think we all miss football being determined more fundamentally on the pitch than what we're seeing at the moment. We've been through situations already with Everton, with Forest, with Leicester, with Manchester City. And of course, this is purely the hors d'oeuvre to the, to, to, to the main seating in, in, in their situation. So, you know, People, people are watching these incredibly sort of complicated cases being 
played out with extreme legal ease. And I think we all just miss seeing the team win on the pitch, not sort of, you know, Lord, 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 Lord Panic, KC, Manchester City is almost as influential to that club as Erling Haaland at the moment. I think, I think, I think, I think we're all slightly, slightly bemused and quite possibly confused as well. Mm. Yeah, and listen, you, you're both right on that point. I think, look, you know, we, we all love football. We, we do call it the beautiful game, don't we? We really do want it to be that. And we want to talk about the product on the pitch, you know, the 90 plus minutes on the pitch. And, and hopefully we will still be entertained by both Manchester City and the, the whole of the Premier League uh, for, the, for the rest of the season. And uh, look, you know, there's no doubt this is, you know, something that creates headlines and distracts. But, you know, we want to focus on the pitch. Of course we do. Um, we talked about sort of big, big meetings, if you like, in the, you know, the Premier League with an emergency meeting. There's a, another big meeting in the offing at Manchester United. Let's have a look at the back page of the mirror. Um, touch and go, Ten Hag future to be decided today, so it'll be tomorrow, with Tuchel back on United's radar. And supposedly at this meeting, Sir Jim Ratcliffe, Sir Dave Brailsford, Omar Barada, Dan Ashworth, Jason Wilcox, meeting in London to decide if Eric Ten Hag should say. They'd also be joined by majority shareholder Joel Glazer. Um, so obviously we know in, you know, in the light of what's happened with these, these two draws on the pitch, John, uh, against Aston Villa uh, on Super Sunday and of course against Porto on, on Thursday in the Europa League, his future has gone into even sharper focus, even more scrutiny. Um, and it's, uh, you know, a, a, a man who was linked with his job in the summer, who now seems to be in the frame. What do you make of it, John? Yeah, I do. I do think this one's going to run and run, David. And I, I was at Villa Park yesterday, and, and 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 frankly, you know, it was it was one of the worst games I've seen in a while. Um, it was dull. It was boring. And frankly, you, you know, completely out of keeping with United's glorious traditions. Let's be honest here. Only newly promoted Southampton have now scored fewer goals in the Premier League this season than United. It's officially. Uh, United's worst start to a Premier League season. And yet I say all this and we're 10 games in, basically, for, for Eric Ten Hag. And don't forget, this is the club that backed their manager in the summer, admirably so in my view, and basically backed him um, both as a sort of position of, of strength as manager, but also backed him in, in, in the transfer market saying, you know, here's some, here's some buys for you. And I thought some of the buys were really good. They've yet to take sort of shape. Let me, Euro, for example, is out injured. But I do feel at the moment it's just that circle of negativity, really. And it's either going to take... Man United to say, look, we're going to back this manager until the end of the season. They probably don't even feel that they need to do that, having sort of given him a new contract. But, you know, maybe a, a public vote of confidence would help. Or or kind of, you know, at the moment, it does almost feel on the, on the flip side, you, you're delaying the kind of the inevitable, really. Because if it's not clicking, if United are not playing the way that the fans want to see. And I have to say, the fan base have been so supportive of Ten Hag. We really have. I really admire that in a lot of the match-going United fans. They're still with the manager and want to see him turn it round. But I do think there's a big discussion to be had here. I mean, Tuchel would be a hell of a turnaround. I don't doubt it at all that he would want the job. He's, you know, my colleague David McDonald reporting that, that he would be very keen. But he met with them with the summer. He was part of the review. <laughs> and the base obviously didn't work for him then. It didn't work for United then. So, so why on earth change it 10 games in? I, I just feel United almost have to kind of say, look, we're going to stick with it for now. And basically, I think I think they probably will at that meeting, at that board meeting, and stick with the manager and try and get him time and support to turn it around. Because I think they they owe it to him, and I don't think you can kind of make that you know decision to completely reverse everything that they went into in the summer just after ten games. So I hope they stick with him, but I think United fans are probably going to you know feel as if their patience is wearing thin right now. Mm. It's it's really interesting, isn't it? Because on this one you can really make a case either way on whether he should say he should go and, and argue it fairly. I mean, I think, you know, you've probably been in those discussions in the press box many times just yourself, John. Um, looking at the eye and the sun, Riath, both uh, papers make mention of Eric uh, Ten Hag going on holiday. Uh, it is the international break, so, you know, that, that kind of makes sense to a, to a point. And they also say, that, you know, that United said they, they'll, they'll make, make this sort of measured. Uh, do, what does, what, reading between the lines, what do you think that means? Does that mean that, you know, you stick with Eric Ten Hag? that you maybe find, I don't know, some other solution like Rivan who is who is there waiting in the wings, or Thomas Tuchel? What, 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 what's your sort of instinct on that one, I guess? I think, I think Van Nistelrooy is quite an interesting figure in all of this, but I can't help but just hear the sort of booming sound of 
Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in my ears whenever it gets whenever it gets mentioned. You know, you look at you look at someone like Thomas Tuchel. He's got the he's got the credibility. He's a Champions League winner. He's a big name that will that will satisfy people. When we talk about Ten Hag more generally, again, I I think United put themselves in this interesting position over the summer by 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 keeping him, making a big big play of it. To reverse ferret now would seem quite quite peculiar, quite reactionary. But then you do take that step back, and this isn't a temporary inertia. This has been this 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 has been running for over a year. They look absolutely dire on the pitch. They don't have any identity. They concede goals by the boatload. They don't score. They've got eight points from seven games. They're in the, they've made their worst ever Premier League start and. At some point, it just takes a brave call to say, no, this is Manchester United. There's going to be a change. And actually, that goes for that, that, that goes for any club, but especially Manchester United, where there's so much noise, there's so much attention, there's so much history, there's so many pundits from ex-Man United players constantly contributing to the narrative within the media. They... they it, 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 it's got to the point where I dare say it feels untenable. I'm, I'm re typically reluctant to join into a, a pile on with a with, with a manager, but there has been no tangible improvement to this team over a very very long period of time. Yeah. yeah. You're watching back pages tonight. Welcome back to the Rush John Cross and also Rathal Samurai from the Mail. Let's uh, get to England, shall we? We are into another international break. And Harry Kane is fit for the games against Greece and from the back page of the Sun. Keep calm and Harry on. Seem to have issues, I think, with his ankle, uh, also treatment on his groin as Bayern Munich drew 3-3 with Eintracht Frankfurt. Uh, so, so Riath, I mean, this is a chance for Harry Kane to, to add to his goal-scoring exploits for England, surely? It is. Look, I'm a little bit conflicted about this one, actually, just because, obviously, we saw the summer. Harry Kane clearly wasn't fit at the Euros. And he's had, you know, he had ankle and, and groin in, in issues against Frankfurt. He got a knock against Leverkusen as well. There's a, there's, I, I understand the importance for Lee Carsley. He's, 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 he's in an audition for the job. He's going well. Greece have won two from two. You want, you, you, you want to win the game. There's, but there is, there is quite a part of me that's thinking maybe Harry Kane should have, should have a break. He, he's, he's made a very good start to the season. Um, he, he's obviously. Sort of, I thought it was something absurd, like ten goals, eight games. It's it's Harry Kane numbers, but I I I, I don't know, I don't see the necessity to use him all of the time. And I think if he's accumulating injuries, there might be something to be said for giving giving him a little bit of a rest. It's it's Greece at home. Yeah, Greece followed by Finland and and John. I mean Lee Carsley started off well. He's got these two games. Is he? Edging closer to the the job full time. Oh, without a shadow of a doubt. Look, I think you know, as you know, I've, I've written you know, for tomorrow. Basically, it's his job to lose, in my view. Um, I do think the FA really want to give him the job. I think that basically that would represent him coming through the St George's Park system. I think it would represent also him encouraging young players who have come through the SGP system. And um, and also a nod to kind of you know um, the British coaches really um, having sort of led the under twenty ones to uh, success in the European Championships um, last year. I do like Carsley. I think he's um, I think he's adapted well. Um, I think he's playing a nice brand of football. And hey, listen, let's not kid ourselves here. It was a, it was a comfortable pass that kind of you know he was almost left with frankly after Gareth Southgate's reign in that basically if they'd stayed in the top flight it would have been difficult nations league games instead they were relegated and basically had how can i put this three easier opponents to navigate home and away and basically yes you should be winning those games so it was almost a very sort of kind of friendly introduction here and now they face Greece who as you rightly say basically won their first two games but look if they win that and they would the top of the group. They avoid any sort of disasters along the way. I'm utterly convinced it will be Lee Carsley's job. And, and, and how about this for a scenario? The, the World Cup qualifying draw, 
is in Geneva on um, Friday, December 13th. And I wouldn't be surprised if he if he does it with a plum and, and in style that he might even be a permanent manager by then. Mm. So, look, I do think it's Carsley. It's in a great position, but a lot will hinge on that game against Greece on Wednesday, uh, sorry, on Thursday night. And, you know, having Harry Kane fit to lead the line. I love Harry Kane for England. He's brilliant captain. Uh, I think can only be good news for England and indeed Lee Carsley. We've got only about sort of 45, 50 seconds left, Riyadh. Your thoughts on, on the situation with Lee Carsley? I mean, you know, is John right? It's his job to lose? It, it, it certainly seems that way. I think we, we, we're seeing the sort of noises in the background at Newcastle and Eddie Howe. I think that's an interesting situation. But it, 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 all, all of the feelings to me are that this audition, it, you know, the, the length of it, the nature of the games it, it it feels like it's being contrived for Carsley um yeah I'd agree with John it is to lose um just to reflect one other story very very briefly um the for the Netherlands great midfielder Johan Neeskens John passing away today it's been picked up by, by a couple of the papers just just tell us very very briefly you know what a figure he was in football are oh, one of the greats, a beautiful member of that that great Dutch side with Cruyff and, and the like you know 74 78 runners up he transformed the, 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 the Dutch nation into being such a respected and powerful force within the game and just typified, you know, what the Dutch total football model was all about. A wonderful footballer, you know, very sad news, but wonderful tributes actually in some of the papers tomorrow. And quite right too, one of the all-time greats in my view.